Hello, my name is Bartomiej Zapad and the purpose of this movie is an explanation of covariance and contravariance in C-sharp interfaces in generic types in C-sharp. Covariance and contravariance is designed for generics and is responsible for making the generic type inside of an interface either polymorphic for covariance and anti-polymorphic for contravariance. On the purpose of explaining this technique, I've created a class library called co-contravariance example. And on the purpose of explaining uh, this technique, I picked the example uh, of cars. I will add some interfaces for car and engine and gearbox, making the interface by car generic of the type engine and of the type gearbox. Let's create an iCar interface on purpose of explaining covariance and contravariance because uh, it works on interfaces. So uh, you can declare the type, the generic type covariant or contravariant inside of an interface. And then by the way of deriving the interface, you can, you can uh, benefit from the usage of covariance and contravariance relying on the interface on the generic types that are either covariant and contravariant. This technique is very powerful and its explanation is quite complex. Uh, first of all, I have to say that in order to make the type covariant, you have to use the out keyword. And to make the type contravariant, you have to use the in keyword. Uh, be patient to wait until I will explain what it actually does. Uh, however, remember that contravariant is in and covariant is out. For now, I will not make those types any of, of those two to show what actually doesn't work the way the developer might um, by the ways of intuition, expect that works in C sharp. And uh, what doesn't work, which I will show just in a minute by adding some classes, what doesn't work for the derivals in C sharp is that when you create a type that derives from I car, you can declare. And in order to show that, let's add a manager class. It's called a manager just because it's gonna tie up all the code that we we are currently implementing. So when you create a public I car type um, field inside of the class, we can expect that it would that it would allow us to create a deriving type for a uh, for car. Let's say, I will add that in a minute, that we are creating a Porsche car. And uh, as you can see, it now doesn't work because there, there's no Porsche class and, and it misses a lot of code right now. However, you can expect that Porsche, which derives from my car, which is obvious, which we'll make in a minute. You can create a type that derives from my car, which is uh, in this example, a particular car, and it works. So we achieve polymorphism this way. What doesn't happen uh, purely natively in C-sharp is that when you add some type over here, and let's add two interfaces to make this example clear. So let's add the interface for engine 
and let's add interface for gearbox. Now that we've added those two, we can say that I car of I engine and I gearbox equals a new car that contains those two. However, the problem is, the problem of generics, the fact that if you would like to instantiate a generic type over here, that is a deriving type from, let's say, uh, the first one is engine, so there has to be an engine. So when we want to create a, a type that is generic over here that derives from this type, it natively doesn't work in C sharp until using the polymorphic covariance. Using covariance makes certain difficulties inside of an iCar interface, which I will show in just a minute. So in order to show this particular thing over here, I'll need to add a Porsche class that implements our car interface. So let's add it. And let's say that it derives from iCar. And let's make it generic so that it contains T engine and T gearbox again. And obviously, uh, until the Porsche class is made generic as well, it doesn't work. Now it works. So once we've created a Porsche class that is generic of an engine and of, of the gearbox, uh, we can have inside of a manager instantiation of those two. So now, in order for this to work, we can say that we have an engine and a gearbox over here, and we miss the field name, let's call it simply a car for now. Uh, and uh, as you can see, this behaves fine, which is obvious because uh, the Porsche class derives from iCar, which happens over here, if we remove that, it would obviously stop working because there is no derivance relationship between Porsche and the car. However, the problem begins when the developer would like to say that the Porsche contains a different engine than the one declared over here. So. On the purpose of this example, let's create for now the abstract engine class. This engine class should derive from an engine, I engine, which is obvious. But then inside of a manager, if we would like to say that there is a derivance relationship between I engine an engine. So let's make it. Let's say that we want to add engine over here. As you can see, there is a thick red line under engine and the error message saying that the type engine doesn't match expected type I engine. So obvious way to fix that would be saying that the iCar is of type engine. But then we miss the polymorphism we want to achieve over here. So we want to create a deriving type inside of a generic. And uh, this actually fixes the problem. But then if we would like to add another car, which would be of a different engine again over here, it once again makes a problem. In order to show this, let's add a diesel engine that derives from an engine. 
So let's get, let's have a diesel engine, which is a engine, an engine that derives from an abstract engine. Let's see, let's have a look. This class is not abstract, it doesn't make much difference right now. But in the purpose of achieving the pure polymorphism, we have to say that the engine class is abstract because the engine itself is an abstract thing. And um, uh, we, wouldn't, we will not create any abstract code over here to make this engine purely abstract because it's not the purpose of this example. What we want to show, what I want to show, is that uh, there's no way to instantiate um, the engine, uh, the diesel engine, over here. Once the engine here is like you see an abstract engine class, it again doesn't work. We would have to show, we would have to say, sorry, that iCar is of type diesel engine. For this to work, obviously, we need to, we need to, uh, we need to fix the obvious thing about uh, the same name of, of a property of a field inside a manager class. Anyway, uh, now, as you can see, it behaves fine, but what we want to achieve is that any of the car is of type I engine, and the instantiation brings up the deriving type diesel or abstract engine. That's the thing we want to achieve, and by the way of showing uh, you this particular thing, I'm going, I'm aiming, I'm uh, coming up to show covariance inside of uh, an interface. So for this to work, we have to mark the type, the generic type T engine covariant, which makes it polymorphic. Now that I've made the engine covariant, it starts working fine. That's the reason for covariance to exist. Thanks to covariance, you can achieve polymorphism. You can say that the engine deriving type is the one that you have to use inside of a Porsche class for, for this particular instantiation. So making the T engine over here inside of a car class, making it covariant, brings the power of using the deriving types inside of a generics. Once again, I will show that again. Uh, when you take out this out keyword from here, making the type T engine invariantly um, invariant, sorry, not invariant, but simply invariant, making this type invariant, brings up the error, and this error says that there's no implicit conversion between those types. And again, making this covariant makes those, those types uh, polymorphic, and you can create an engine and a diesel engine and a deriving engine from I engine, you can create it inside of this method. What's the purpose of such of such approach? The purpose of such approach is that you can create, for example, a generic dictionary of an I car, which takes up all the possible engines that exist over there and you can tie them up inside of one dictionary and then iterate over them and, uh, and achieve, you know, for example, the chain of responsibility 
design pattern on those types. For example, I'm saying only the example, you can you can come up with whatever you actually want to achieve. However, if I create a dictionary of a key that is a string because this particular thing doesn't concern us right now, and of an I car of I engine and I gearbox, you can instantiate this dictionary this way. However, I mean with uh, again I engine. However, now by the syntax of short initiation, we can say that the Porsche includes new of I engine and I gearbox. However, thanks to the fact that I engine is covariant, you can say diesel engine over here, which works fine. And again, if I make this type invariant, it doesn't work and it points out to the diesel engine that is not the type that we expect here because we mark this I engine over here and over here and uh, by skipping covariance we are unable to achieve polymorphism over here so uh, let's focus on the fact that you can achieve this polymorphism over here and what actually is a problem once creating a type covariant it obviously is not something you can do for every type and let me show you that once I create for instance void or let's say it's a bool method start I mean to start a car we could expect that the start method of a car requires an engine as a parameter. So the engine is required for the car to start. And as you can see, only when I try to make uh, the generic engine parameter of a method inside of the interface it already comes up with the error of invalid variance what this um, particular error says is that and it should be contravariant and is covariant so actually if I wanted to make the engine parameter of a method inside of this interface I would have to make it contravariant which is anti-polymorphic which is something I will explain just in a minute on the gearbox type however for now let me show you that the engine can be contravariant when you want to use it as a parameter inside of a method which makes it input safe that's what is the explanation of of how contravariant behaves However, making this type contravariant brings up trouble over here again because on the purpose of creating those cars, of instantiating those cars, we need the engine to be covariant, not contravariant. That's the difference. And the contravariance is, like I said, anti-polymorphic and it's a subject of an explanation for just a few minutes from now. Anyway, uh, what I want to say is that making the type covariant makes you unallowed to create methods with, for example, parameters of this type. It stops working. So we cannot do that. What we can do is we can return as an output the generic engine type and let's say we have a fix, fix method that returns T-engine. 
So let's say the car requires fixing and it returns a fixed engine once fixed. As you can see, this behaves perfectly fine, there's no error. And uh, the engine uh, type, when it's covariant, can be returned from an interface. If we wanted to make the parameter, it wouldn't work as I just showed before. But fixing the engine, returning the type, the generic type, the engine behaves fine, which is called output safety. So let's forget about those methods for now because the Porsche class will stop working on, on, until we implement those methods, which we actually don't need for now. And let's get back to this particular example. So as you can see, we can have a dictionary of, uh, of different uh, cars and we achieved the polymorphic behavior over here by using covariance, which is very powerful, but impossible unless the covariance is actually used for this. And uh, to be honest, uh, the explanation of covariance should be finished for now. It should be quite clear for the developer listening to this video what covariance brings to your programming and what you can achieve by using covariance. You can achieve polymorphism inside of a generic in C sharp, as you can see on this example. So now let's go on to antipolymorphic contravariance, which is an in keyword. So let's make gearbox contravariant, which is an in keyword. And uh, once again, let's first show what's made impossible once we make this type contravariant. So we cannot return T gearbox let's say fix again, it doesn't make much difference. We cannot return the generic T gearbox as an output because it should be output safe, not input safe. So if we set, for instance, if we set void or bool over here and used this as a parameter, it works perfectly fine. So it's vice versa from covariance. So contravariance allows you to use this as an input parameter, but it allows you to return this parameter. So uh, when creating an interface that contains generic types, when trying to achieve covariance and contravariance, you have to be aware of this particular problem that occurs once you try to do that. And now let me show you what actually you can achieve with contravariance, which is maybe not same intuitive as, as for covariance because it's antipolymorphic and actually to be honest, the usage of contravariance is for me quite questionable. And uh, I managed to break the code that compiled using contravariance. And let me show that in just a minute. To show contravariance, we need some gearbox types. And uh, by the way of showing you the practice, let me add the class that derives from uh, iGearbox, which is automatic gearbox. And the automatic gearbox derives from iGearbox. And this antipolymorphic behavior, which I will show in the manager, thanks to the fact that the gearbox is now 
contravariant antipolymorphic, you can now say that the gearbox over here can be marked as automatic gearbox. And uh, you can enforce that theoretically any car contains automatic gearbox. However, as you can see, the instantiation contains the more general type I gearbox. And until removed over here, have a look, it works fine. So, with contravariance, I can instantiate the type that is less general than the declaration says. This obviously means that the automatic gearbox can contain the method public void switch gear and this method as you can see does not exist over here and the trouble is that once we try to reach this method let me fix that so that it would compile once necessary so trying to reach out the method inside of this instance inside of a Porsche or gearbox this method thanks to this declaration is reachable uh, inside of a Porsche however instantiating it with an interface makes this method non-existing so what can actually happen is that let's have let's have um, a, a car that returns gearbox and as you can see now it becomes clear why for the contravariance it's impossible to return gearbox it's impossible because returning gearbox over here would mean that the car can call a method on a gearbox which should be unavailable given the fact that we instantiate the gearbox as less general than we say in a declaration so let's have a gearbox method over here and as you can see it doesn't compile but let's have a look at the fact that inside of a any dummy method over here we can use a car that has a get gearbox that has switch gear as you can see the car is unable this particular instance car is unable to call switch gear because of this particular thing so how do we break the code so that we achieve the gearbox anyway and uh, and the code breaks so let's take it out from here because it wouldn't compile over here let's first compile the project so that we are sure it it uh, it doesn't have a problem we have to forget about this line for now we'll get back to that just as soon as we make sure this project compiles which happens right now and let's add this method to Porsche Pass. Uh, now it should be public because we've taken this out from the interface. And have a look at the fact that let's return a default of 
key gearbox. And let's make sure this compiles for now. It does. So now in the manager, let's get back to this particular call and see that the car does not include the get gearbox method regardless of the fact that we created a Porsche class over here. So now, what we need to do is either change this declaration of an I car to Porsche so that the get gearbox method exists, or add get gearbox to I car, which is what is impossible again, is that when we try to get gearbox over here it wouldn't compile so what we have to do is make it Porsche over here and as you can see now that we are attempting to switch to Porsche we get an error again we cannot convert from Porsche of automatic gearbox to I gearbox. Why is that? Because the Porsche is not an interface type, which does not include those covariance and contravariance declarations. So the only thing we can do in order to actually break the code is to cast. So let's cast a car to this type we cast the car so let's add some fixes and as you can see because of trying to cast to i gearbox we don't see this method again because we need an automatic gearbox over here. So let's make it automatic gearbox. And as you can see, this code compiles well, and it would actually run. However, trying to cast to automatic gearbox from iGearbox, uh, should be a problem because our gearbox is contravariant. So let's run it and see what kind of error message we actually get. It's either we cannot cast or there's no switch gear method. I actually have to run it to see what happens because in my opinion this casting is valid only in the compile time. And this casting should break in the runtime because you cannot cast to automatic gearbox from iGearbox because you can do vice versa for now. So uh, you could cast to iGearbox from automatic gearbox, not, not, uh, not vice versa because it's contravariant. So let's add a project that allows us to run the code. Uh, let's make it a console application but with .NET Framework so that uh, it's the same as, as the class library. So uh, let's make a console app to try to run this code. It doesn't make much difference, let's call it dummy because uh, we only do that application for the purpose of seeing the kind of error message we get trying to achieve this code, we actually now try to to add. As, as, as you can see, I made a mistake because I added a C++ console app. Uh, so we want to say add new project. Uh, for the solution, and that's the problem I get right now. New project, and I want to say 
console.net framework. Okay, I see only .NET Core, so let's forget it. I think on a dummy will make an error because there is a dummy project on a disk. I only removed it from the solution. So let's call it cause and create it. And I'm wondering whether there's going to be a trouble with the fact that the .NET Core is taken over here to reference the project. If it does make a problem, I will be uh, searching yeah, dependencies and let's see. Yeah, I can add a reference so there's not a problem. I will add a reference, say OK. Console right line can stay. Let's say console read line. However, however, this will not be reached because we'll make a breakpoint. See the error. So this line is actually not necessary. So let's instantiate the manager and call dummy. So let's have a manager inside our program. Let's import. Not diesel car, but dummy. So we're calling a dummy method. And let's have a breakpoint over here because it's going to fail anyway. Let's make cause the startup project. Okie dokie. And let's see that the dummy fails here. But uh, let's see the kind of an error. I vote that uh, it would say that the casting is impossible. However, if the cast is fine, which is going to be something enigmatic for me, once the cast is fine, which in, on the compile time sounds fine, but for me in the runtime time it should fail, uh, it will fail trying to reach the switch gear method, which is available in automatic gearbox which is trying to cast over here, but it's casting from my gearbox, which is contravariant. So I actually have to say that the casting is truly valid because my gearbox is something that automatic gearbox derives from. We can see that over here. But like I say, it's contravariant, so it should be forbidden. So let's, let's stop. Uh, imagine let's just run it and see what kind of error it actually results in. Now I wonder whether it would say that the method is unavailable. So, so we can see that the car is of type IU box and we are trying to cast. So let's hit F10 and see what happens. Okie dokie, it's an invalid cast, so I was correct. You are unable to cast the object of Porsche to Porsche, given the fact that you try to cast from high gearbox to automatic gearbox because it's contravariant. So as you can see, this code compiles fine and it shows promise to the developer that it would run a switch gear method, which is impossible because this is of type I gearbox, which doesn't contain this method. So the cast is invalid. And uh, we reached the end of this movie by seeing that we, with the contravariance, we are able to create some code that compiles but wouldn't run anyway, which is a risk. And actually I wonder whether it should rise a compilation error. And I think by the way of saying it's contravariant, it should spot that this casting is invalid and say this on, on the compile time. However, since it doesn't work this way, there may be a reason for that it may be, it maybe it's not discoverable for the computer.
population that this casting is invalid anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, let's let's try to cast the engine to see that this would rise an error. See, it's a suspicious cast. So now uh, we can see that we are hinted that the cast is probably incorrect. But what I see is actually it compiles again, but only is is recognized as a suspicious cast, I think, by resharper. I would say this is, is a resharper error, so it compiles anyway. So, so what I want to say is that you will not get a hint of a suspicious cast over here, but this cast is invalid anyway. So you cannot do that. And what I think is the same about covariance, but we would have to just uh, create another example. So to sum up, let's let's say that covariance out keyword is polymorphic, generic inside of an interface in C sharp, and contravariance is anti-polymorphic, generic inside of an interface in C sharp and this particular example I think has explained that very deeply and showed us everything we have to say and we have to know about current contravariants in C sharp. Thank you for watching this movie. See you in the other webinars about about programming, advanced programming.